Sometimes you have to go in, literally. Today, I'm going in. This is why you're offended by Angel Reese's level of confidence. It's simple, but the devil's in the details. Stay tuned. You need to hear this. Let's get it. If you're not in the States or not following the situation, Angel Reese is the star wing player for LSU, the team that just won the NCAA Women's National Championship. There's a firestorm on Twitter and in the sports world and beyond because Angel gave the John Cena, you can't see me hand wave in front of her face and pointed to her ring finger, the one she's putting the championship ring on. Yeah, that one. Basketball requires confidence, supreme confidence. I've talked about it before on the channel. Greats have confidence that most of us will never understand. Her confidence isn't the problem here. The reason you're offended is the problem. Angel is a 20-year-old star creating space in the women's game for women like her. She's getting NIL deals with several major companies. She's creating a path for young women like her to become empowered, much like their male counterparts. Her team just beat Iowa and the great Caitlin Clark in the championship game. So Angel dropped the John Cena move, whatever. Keith Oberman called her an effing idiot. The owner of Barstool Sports called her a piece of crap. So why are you offended? Here's the first reason. She doesn't fit the mold the world would have you believe she's supposed to fit. She's only 20. She's making money. Her team is tough and they have supreme confidence on and off the floor. The narrative is that she's not supposed to do that. It's offensive to your ideology that a young black woman could show the same confidence that Caitlin could show on the court. Mentally, it's a struggle for you to believe that this little 165 pound black girl can be as dominant and have the greatness that she has, yet be bold enough to share the confidence on the court. In some ways, if we're being fully transparent, this is a black white thing. It goes back to the stereotypes many have about black women and the microaggressions they deal with every day. When the Iowa coach said that playing South Carolina's girls was like going to a bar fight, she said that before the game. I get that it's a reference to physicality, but can we rewind the tape and see if she's ever made that reference about any other team? I can't find it. You know what, it feels unnecessary. Dr. Jill Biden offering a kumbaya moment to have both LSU and Iowa attend the White House, although I believe it comes from a place of well-intention, reeks of white fragility for the poor Iowa girls and not honoring the champion as the champion has always been honored. Don't believe me? Well, there's another runner up this week, predominantly black team, and they were not invited to the White House. I'm just speaking the facts. It's important to note that race unfortunately plays a part because when we cast dispersions on one group and not another for doing the exact same thing, you start to look for the differentiators. Caitlin Clark was doing the you can't see me move in this same tournament. And she was hella disrespectful to Raven Johnson of South Carolina fanning her hand at her to insinuate, yo, leave her open, she can't make the shot. When those things happened, not a word was said not even a mention of disrespect or someone calling her an effing idiot. It was just a part of the game. It was a part of the mental warfare. Those of us who play basketball know it's trash talk. It's been a part of the competitive nature of the game for 40 or more years. If trash talk is a competitive part of the game, why were you offended when Angel dropped a couple bars? Let me give you another reason. Angel is unapologetically great. Michael Jordan's unapologetically great, yet he would give you the business. Just a couple weeks ago, Klay Thompson was sitting on the bench barking at Desmond Bain of the Memphis Grizzlies, counting his championship rings on his fingers. Trash talk. Listen, greatness requires no apology. Some would say it's classier to have humility and say nothing, and that's cool. But where were those same people before LSU won the title? An angel told you what time it was. Caitlyn's great in her own right. That said, where was the uproar when Caitlyn was waving the hand and running around the gym after beating Louisville? 
Where was the uproar from the hand wave during the South Carolina game? It didn't exist because she fits the mold. She's the girl next door from Iowa, who was also a superstar from the beginning, who fit the narrative for her to be unapologetically who she is. The difference here is many people in America demand an apology from Angel, yet those same people praise Caitlyn for being classy. Listen, trash talk as the clock runs out on your national championship dreams is no different than trash talk when you beat Louisville or South Carolina. Let me give a little context when I say Angel is unapologetically great. Angel ran track, she's a swimmer, ballet dancer, and a volleyball champion. She's the second highest scorer in history for her high school. She was a five-star recruit coming out of college, and after starring at Maryland, again, the top recruit in the transfer portal a year ago, leaving Maryland to head to LSU. Angel has always put in the work to be the best at every level. She won the Most Outstanding Player Award in the NCAA Tournament. She's got more name, image, and likeness deals than most players, men's or women's, in the college game. And Angel said it best, I'm too hood, I'm too ghetto, I don't fit the narrative, and I'm okay with that. I'm from Baltimore, where you hoop outside and talk trash. If it was a boy, y'all wouldn't be saying nothing at all. Let's normalize women showing passion for the game instead of it being embarrassing. Deion Sanders, AKA Coach Prime said it best. Don't let my confidence offend your insecurity. But you know what? Something doesn't feel right to you. What triggered your insecurity? Is it that she's only 20? Could it be that she's heading to the WNBA soon enough as a top draft pick? Is it the idea that women should stay in their place and not have the audacity to act that way in public? If we're going deeper, could it be the idea that she's truly great at something and has the boldness to stand in it and that strikes a chord in you? Because if we're being honest, you're not sure if you're great at anything. My channel is positive. It always has been and it always will be. That said, we'll address some stuff when necessary, especially when it comes to confidence. If you're offended by Angel's confidence, I would like you to take a look at what really bothers you. Ask yourself that question. Generally, one person's confidence is offensive to another who lacks confidence. People complain about greatness and especially the boldness to be passionate and celebrate it when they aren't willing to put in the work to be great themselves. Angel's fun on the court was just that, a little fun. The problem isn't with Angel or the national champs. The problem lies with your response. One last note for you, Angel, if you happen to see this video. Keep being amazing. Continue breaking down walls and impacting lives. This situation became much bigger than your well-deserved ring. You positively impacted many young girls. Ignore the haters. Keep winning, keep rising above. Yo, keep getting the bag. Continue putting in the hard work to become even better. Build the mental toughness, discipline, and fortitude to become the best you can possibly become. And in the midst of all this, I hope you can always rely on faith to get you through tough times. As I know, in the middle of this celebration, I'm sure all of this stuff isn't easy to deal with. Also, I want you to always know this and never, ever, not even for a second, change because confidence will always be your superpower, and congrats on the Nagas.